you have just heard three children's pieces. The first one was by Béla Bartók. It's based on a Hungarian folk song called I Lost My Handkerchief. The second two are pieces by Robert Schumann from his album for the young. The first one was The Happy Farmer and the second one was The Wild Horseman. I'm sure most of you know these pieces and many of you have probably played them yourselves. I'm very happy to be here for this live stream concert. And first, I would like to thank Dana Maben, the interim minister. A minister, wow, music director. So someday maybe she'll be a minister, but for now she's a music director. I also want to make a plug for the next concert in this series. It's next Sunday at 4 p.m. <clears throat> and it will feature Dana Maben on piano and Christine Bucus as a soprano. They will give a song recital and will be featuring works by Mozart, Schubert, Vincent Persichetti, and the online premiere of a new set of songs, Love Is Not All, six poems of Edna St. Vincent Millay, songs written by Dana Maben. I also want to thank Britt Alberton, who is our videographer and graphic designer. And I want to thank my dear husband, Bob Leverett, who is serving today as stagehand and page turner. And finally, I want to thank Greg Hayes, the music director emeritus of the Unitarian Society. Greg has made this wonderful stand for my toy piano, saving the day for this performance. Thank you, Greg. It's great to be here, and it's great to finally be able to perform again. I had concerts canceled in the spring, and I forgot how much I like performing, and I'm lucky to be here thanks to Dana. The other thing that's wonderful for me is I've been playing concerts for many years. I have a huge mailing list, and many of them are friends from all over the country. They always write back and say, oh, that's great that you're doing this. Wish I could be there. Well. Today, a lot of them, I think, are here, and I'm really delighted and say a special hello to my distant friends. This concert is called A Program of Pieces in the Pandemic, and the idea behind it is to bring enjoyment and some relief from the more difficult times that we're living in. The first part of the program represents a return to childhood. It's got children's pieces, and it um, has my toys, my toy piano, my toy dragon, and um, my toy unicorn. They're all friends, as you will hear soon. Uh, the other return to childhood in my life, and maybe some of you are doing this, I've been coloring. <laughs> it's great fun, and if you're feeling really stressed, I highly recommend it. So now it's time for me <clears throat> to introduce you to Spunky, my toy concert grand piano. Spunky is a boy, therefore he is a boy toy. He's a wonderful piano to own because I never have to tune him. He stays perfectly out of tune all by himself. He's also quite a character, which is why he got his name. He thinks he is just as good as the big piano, just as sensitive, just as wonderful, just as spectacular. If you don't agree, please don't tell him. <laughs> Margaret Leng Tan, the diva of the toy piano, says she is, quote, intrigued by the toy piano's magical overtones, hypnotic charm, and not least, its off-key poignancy. I heartily agree. There are more program notes on the toy on the website, and you can see it later. 
Now, I got Spunky in 2015, fell in love with him, and I wanted to give him his very own piece. So the person who I thought was perfect for the job was my dear friend, Kayeza Fern. She is a pianist and composer, and she is the daughter of my longtime colleague at Smith College, Ken Fern. She also happens to be a Unitarian Universalist music director in Taunton, Mass. So this is quite the happy family. My husband and I often go on cross-country trips, and the summer of 2016, we did our annual cross-country trip, and while we were away, Spunky had a six-week play date with Kaeza. The result of that play date was a week in the life of a toy piano by Kaeza Fern. Monday, a fresh start. Wednesday, a little blue.
Thursday, a tongue and cluck tango. Friday, a pickup line. Saturday, mischief making with unicorn and dragon. Sunday, a prayer for peace. Thank you. 
The next piece on the program is a piece for the pandemic because it is both meditative and minimalist. Meditation is something that some of us have resorted to and minimalism describes our more limited lives, I think. This Cage piece is one of my favorite pieces. John Cage was the great experimental composer of the 20th century and is most famous for his piece, Four Minutes and 33 Seconds, which is four minutes and 33 seconds of silence. He also was the godfather of the toy piano as a concert instrument. This toy piano was invented in 1872 by Albert Schoenhut. From 1872 to 1948, it was just a toy. It was played by generations of children ages three to six. In 1948, Cage wrote Sweet for Toy Piano, thereby making this toy into a serious concert instrument. Com many composers since Cage have written for the instrument. George Crumb, Maurizio Cagle, Caesa Fern, and perhaps even Dana Maven will join the group. In 1949, in the Peanuts cartoon, Schroeder started to play toy piano. And as far as we know, he's still playing. Dream by John Cage. I am playing in an arrangement for toy piano and modern piano by Margaret Ling Tan. She is the diva of the toy piano, has commissioned many works for the instrument and attends toy piano conventions all over the world. She was a close friend of Cage's during the last 10 years of his life. As I already mentioned, this is a minimalist piece. It only uses eight different pitches. It's also a piece that you have to listen to differently. You won't hear any catchy tunes or catchy rhythms. It goes nowhere. It's meditative. It's soothing. So I'm going to ask my very small audience to not applaud when I finish the cage because I'd like to go from its magical mood directly into the first of my Schubert MoMA Musico pieces. In the next eight minutes, I invite you to let yourself drift. Let the notes wash over you and take you into a land where you can dream.
thank you, small audience and large one. You just heard the first of Schubert's MoMA Musico. He wrote six of these pieces, and the title translates to musical moments. I have programmed the first three, so I will continue with the second and third piece. The third piece was titled by Schubert, Air Rus, or Russian Song. There is a wonderful YouTube video of Isadora Duncan dancing to this piece. Duncan, as you know, was the great 20th century modern dancer.
Next on the program are my favorite pieces for a pandemic, the four duets of J.S. Bach. I think they're very appropriate for a pandemic because they embody some of the more disturbing emotional states that most of us have been experiencing. The four duets were published during Bach's lifetime as part of the clavier übung or keyboard practice. He published four volumes of keyboard practice and these duets are in volume three along with many organ pieces. They're called duets because they're in two parts. One part for the right hand, one part for the left hand. You can think of them as two-part inventions on steroids. Most of you know that J.S. Bach wrote The Well-Tempered Clavier, a series of preludes and fugues in all of the major and minor keys. Well-tempered, of course, refers to a kind of tuning that allowed you to play in all of the keys different from equal temperament, but which also plays in all of the keys. My friend Conrad Wolf, Wolf <clears throat> who I will talk about in a minute, used to call the E minor fugue from book one of the Well-Tempered Clavier the ill-tempered fugue. I'll play you the subject so that you can see why. So that's uh, pretty ill-tempered, I would say. The E minor duet of Bach is also ill-tempered, same key. What, he, what Bach does in this piece is something that is totally illegal and totally frowned upon in Baroque counterpoint. And that is, he writes parallel fifths. If I had written that in my freshman counterpoint class, I would have gotten an F. But Bach is trying to write an ill-tempered duet, and what is better for ill-temperedness than parallel fifths? Parallel fifths were thought to be ugly and destabilizing, and that's why they were forbidden. But Bach can do anything. I am now gonna play for you the beginning of the E minor duet, and I'm going to emphasize the parallel fifths. I won't do that in the performance. So you can hear. The second duet is in F major, a very happy key for Bach. This duet is as healthy as you could possibly want. What we'd all like to be or hope we will continue to be. So it sounds like this. Very happy. However, Bach makes this duet an ABA form, a three-part form, and the B section or the second section is not so healthy. Uh, I would describe it as uh, giving a sense of being sick or woozy. This is what it sounds like. However, Bach saves the day and returns us to the happy F major so we won't get too depressed. The G major duet, I will not play for you right now. Uh, I will play in the performance. It is a pastoral piece, lambs gambling in a sunny field of daisies, whatever, you, whatever image like that you want. So it's certainly not ill-tempered at all. But the final duet is in A minor, and it returns to these more disturbing emotions. My friend Conrad Wolf, who I mentioned before, 
was a piano teacher at Peabody Conservatory of Music. He was a mentor, teacher, and friend of mine for 23 years of my young adulthood. He was a pupil of Archer Schnabel. And Schnabel, in his teaching, used to make up words to the music he was teaching to help his students get the phrasing, the emotional content, the rhythmic impulses. Conrad continued that tradition of making up words to pieces. And so one day in the early 70s, when the Vietnam War was going on and everyone was protesting, including Conrad, he came up with these words for the A minor duet. I hate the Pentagon, and I swear to God, they are rotten, 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 rotten at the Pentagon. And they sound like this with the notes. my friend Conrad. Now I'd like to play for you all four duets of J.S. Bach.
sound of uh, four hands clapping or six hands clapping. <laughs> we can't end the program with that. Um, I'd like to have you leave with a, a happier feeling. So the final piece is a return back to Schubert, our composer of Relief and Repose. It is the third of the dry Klavierstück, which he wrote in May of 1828, the last year of his life. D8, D946 is the Deutsch number. This third piece has come down to us in sketch form only. He died that following November. But it's, it's pretty complete. I think if he had had time, he might have done one or two things with it. But it still is one of my favorite pieces, and it makes a great ending for the program. So I hope you enjoy it.